long. We might have to make a detour here as the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers fans have been begging for it and now they've got it. The Steelers have fired offensive coordinator Matt Canada. Mike Tomlin releasing a very brief statement this morning. I will read it to you. Matt Canada has been relieved of his duties as offensive coordinator. I appreciate Matt's hard work and dedication, and I wish him the best moving forward in his career. This off a season where the Steelers, despite being 6-4, and four, have been outgained in all 10 of their games, their offense has candidly been painful to watch, despite the fact that they continue finding ways to win. Immediate reaction, Neek. Yeah, this is unlike the Steelers, and it felt like this was a move to kind of saved the locker room. I think exactly it, it right. feels like this place has always had a distinct culture and all their decisions have been about kind of protecting that culture. And that culture has always been about kind of hunkering down in the siege mentality, us against the world. Matt Canada seemed like he was us and we were going to defend him until last weekend when we started to hear some of the players start chirping. And then he felt like uh, he was holding them back in the pl eyes of the players. And once the players start feeling that way, the person can't stay. And it's no, it's no knock on Matt Canada, although his numbers suggest that he deserve to move on. Uh, it's unfortunate to have anybody get fired, but I think that's what it was about. It was we about we all know the Steelers are the definition of loyal and of consistent and of stable, but that's a stat even I didn't know. So the, he is only Mike Tomlin is their third head coach since 1969, Chuck right. and old Bill Cower, and now Mike Tomlin. The last time they made a move like this midseason was 1941. So it goes to show you this is something they do not do. They clearly don't want to do. So, Jeff, they obviously felt like they had to do yeah, it. Yeah, Tom, Tomlin knew he's losing his locker room. And you, as the head coach, they understand if, you, if every player on the offense, you saw Najee Harris after the game talking about, can we fix it? And he kind of mockingly says, yeah, we can fix it. You kind of reading all the signs, right? Deontay Johnson, you, they've had a lot of frustrations as this season. And Pickett has not progressed the way they wanted to. I mean, you're talking about guys who are coming and throwing more touchdowns than Pickett. They played two or three games. Like, you, you can't have that type of thing going on with the Steelers in the hunt. Again, disappointing. You know, coaches, unfortunately, take a fall. I think Ken Dorsey's available, too, so you might be able to take that call. He's hurt. I mean, well, well, there's some, there's some things so you, the you, question, you, there's some things you yeah. can do. So there's a lot of things going on here. First of all, it's two days before Thanksgiving. I'm sorry, man. Canada got Amen. fired. Yeah. If, you know, it's a family's involved. It's it's a terrible thing. It's a harsh business, and I feel for his family, and I feel for everybody in that locker room who now has to figure out. Okay, we got a new guy who's coming in. Now it's on us to fix it for him. It's the same thing that Sean McDermott said to Josh Allen when he fired Ken Dorsey. And I talked to Sean McDermott before that game against the New York Jets, and he said, "Listen, it's now on my quarterback. So it's now on Kenny Pickett." And those other players on the offense, you're right there in that division. You're right there to get a wild card spot. You got to figure it out with a new offensive coordinator. You have to turn the page and figure it out rather quickly. By the way, in 1941, the Steelers weren't even known as the Steelers. They were the Steagles. Remember the Eagles and the Steelers War. combined during World War II. That's how long ago it was well, for the Philadelphia so Eagles. So we can blame the Eagles. The Steelers still never <laughs> did that. They always <laughs> blame the Eagles. That's okay. Yeah, look, I, I, I think tough. It, we could take it. I think there's one thing to ask that of Josh Allen, who's accomplished as much as he that has. That is true. That's a good point. To ask it of second-year Kenny Pickett is a lot. And well, we're going to do that anyway. I, yeah, but, but I think that the other issue, whoever takes over, and, and they'll promote someone to call the plays, but whoever takes over next year is going to be charged with helping develop Kenny Pickett. That's right and not just scheme and offense. I mean, what you hear about the Steelers' offense from coaches around the league is the scheme is very simple, it's easy to figure out, and that shows up, uh, you know, in the box scores. Wait a but second. The Steelers' offense has always been very simple. It's been run the football and take away as much as somehow, you can from the quarterback. Don't have him throw more than 25 times a game, even with Ben Roethlisberger early in his career, right? You, come on. Somehow, I mean, in the Matt Canada been, era, it took a step back from that. Well, it's, always been, been, it's always been a very simple offense. Matt Canada could pr possibly blame the Bills for this also, because I think we saw how the Bills responded to having their offensive coordinator fired. That's an excellent and, point. And a lot of people in uh, Pittsburgh probably well, they were, like, they were playing. see, see, right. you can do it. No. It yeah. gets better. The Jets kept them in, kept them in the game. The, the, the Bills <laughs> offense was in the top five anyway. Gonna it's say, not, it's not going to like have this significant drop off and of they did Josh, have Josh Allen, Allen. Hey, throwing the ball around. Gonna, right, I didn't on. say they were right. Yeah. Yeah. Look Dan Orlovsky, if you were up this morning in Kansas City and watching, call in. We'll put you on FaceTime, because he made these points yesterday, and I can't do justice to it, but when he broke down for us the offense of the Steelers yesterday morning, he said two things that stick in my mind. 
and one. They're not calling an offense. They're just calling plays. Right. right? They're just running plays. There's, there's no, no there's no logic to it. There's no theme to it. Anything like that. The second thing he pointed out over and over again. When they got the ball at the end of that game with a chance to win, they threw three passes. None of them went to George Pickens. Right. They have one dynamic receiver who everyone thinks is a difference maker. Not one ball. They all went to Deontay Johnson. Not one of them went to their best player. And as he always says, late in games, it's players, not plays, that make a difference. And I said to him, is that on the coach or is that on the quarterback? And he said both. Right. And so in this case, clearly, they feel like they've got to find a way to make it work, and they, they felt it was, at this point, on the coach. Michael, I always like to look at it from the perspective of the fans and the reporters who are covering the team, right? So you have Robert Sala wait forever, forever, to bench Zach Wilson. Yeah. You have Mike Tomlin and the Steelers organization, I know their history, wait forever to replace Matt Canada. You know, you just, is it too late? For some of these teams, you're making these decisions. It's week 12 in the National Football League, which, calls, which stands for not for long. Wow. You have to make these decisions so you can give your players and your team a chance to do what they want to do.